Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I always do appreciate it. And welcome back to Emerald Gardens. What is this content on the channel? What? Put out the uh, most recent episode of Bro Coaster Season Zoo. Check that out if you haven't. We're on episode... Episode... Can't talk. Episode 3 of that. Uh, lots of really good work, if I do say so myself. <laughs> by, by myself in that one. I worked really hard, and I was really proud of it. And because of that, this project kind of took a mini back seat for a while. But now Mike has the park, and we'll see what he can do. So we're back into Emerald Gardens. And kind of hit a slump, a mini bump, a mini bump slump. And... Uh, it was kind of rough to get to get going. I, I wanted to clean up this entrance area. I didn't get nearly as much done as I wanted to. I'm just running out of time to play these days. Um, real life is 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 a bish right now. A couple weeks of really intense work going on, and then it's off to the uh, Great North. We're going up to Chicago for Christmas time. So this episode, I'm gonna try and squeeze one more out. Um, before I leave, and so there'll be a mini hiatus in content, uh, but that seems to be, that's what always happens this time of year if you've been around for long enough, so, but I'll be back in the new year, uh, with all kinds of Planet Zoo stuff, so, yeah, but anyway, let's talk about what's going on here. Uh, my main inspiration for this building is, oh, I needed a building here, first of all, it was too, it was feeling too open and too weird, so I needed a building, so I went to my, one of my standbys, my personal, my, my home zoo, and there is this exhibit called Natural Encounters, which uh, is an all-indoor exhibit, and it's mixed, a bunch of mixed habitats, and it's really nice. Uh, like, <laughs> there's a tunnel that kids can climb, you know, go through, and they go through a piranha tank. That's pretty fun, the kids like that. They have river otters mixed with, like, squirrels, and then they have uh, tamarins, and peacocks and some other and a sloth in one exhibit and uh, this building is is uh, inspired by that but we go ahead and we call it the fragile kingdom and one of the things it has here that we're working on is this outside area it has an indoor outdoor exhibit area where the little tamarins on nice days they have free reign to come out here and hang out and then they can go inside and you can see them from behind the glass on their inside portion of their habitat it's a cool little building, and one of the things I really noticed about it as I was building it was that um, things were very uh, mundane. Like, the main entrance was pretty cool there, you notice the little angled uh, roof and the glass and all that. But then the rest of the building is literally a box. Like, it is legit a box. And not nearly as many windows <laughs> as I was thinking there might be. What it did have that was interesting, and I don't know if I have video of this, uh, it, it has... Um, skylights it has a domed skylight and a couple other areas where there's skylights and that's the main source of natural light for the habitats rather than actual windows which makes total sense to me i mean i'm sure a lot of the buildings uh, space is taken up by backstage and stuff so that was a neat little detail to think about so nailing the vibe on this little enclosure here was surprisingly difficult though i really did have to stare at the reference image so you have the little the the, the enclosure, you have the habitat, and then you have a row of planter, and then you have a barrier fence. And that seems to be um, everywhere in a zoo. You have the animal fence, then a buffer, and then the human fence. You have at least two levels of protect of obstacle <laughs> from the different from the animal animals and humans interacting. Uh, that seems to be a really common thing. The hardest part of this entire build is that this was built on a silly hill who decided to make terrain shifts in their park who does that so uh it took quite a while <laughs> this was really hard and especially it's especially silly because this isn't even functional it's just it looks nice but uh, I, I fuddle my way through it and it ends up looking okay um i i probably could have tinkered with it for way longer than i did but this is one of those things I just hate. I hate trying to make this stuff look good, and I'm not the best at it. Working with terrain is still a struggle for me, so I'm getting okay with certain parts of it, but this was this was rough. So we have the staircase here, which feels a little over the top, um, a little big, but it is a rather, you know, on that end, it is a rather large uh, span of path. It's The height difference is pretty great there, so anyway. I am very happy with how this turned out. It's amazing how long this actually took me to build. Uh, 
well, how long it take, took to get this episode out. Like I said, I haven't been playing nearly as much as I uh, want to. A lot of that's just time, and a lot of it's just energy. Playing a game, a creative game like this, uh, especially for YouTube when you're making it so other people can see it, it takes a lot of energy and effort to get something where you're, you're happy with it and you're proud of it and you want to show it off. And uh, that's been that kind of energy has been hard for me to come by lately. So that's a part of the reason we've had the drop off. So, but I, I and that and, and I'm always having a hard time with layout and what animals do I want to go in the zoo? Like the pronghorn and buffalo thing, that was pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, I think I want to do some reptiles next. Maybe do an actual reptile house next to this one and do an, a Komodo dragon exhibit uh, where it's behind glass, but. You can see uh, it, it, you can see it from the exterior of the building. Um, again, taking inspiration from my home zoo. So I think that might be next. Um, I want to do. I, I mean, I think maybe elephants uh, coming up soon, or maybe wild dogs, or something a little more um, a little more exotic. Because right now all we have are buffalo and the pronghorn, which are super cool, and I love those exhibits, and I'm really happy with how they're functioning in the zoo, but I need to get something a little more fancy, because this is all imaginary. This, this uh, I think I call it the Fragile Kingdom. This Fragile Kingdom building is all pretend. There's no, we don't have tamarinds in the game. We don't have otters in the game, so we have to pretend that those are in there. And then what we're gonna go working on here is a, like, entrance, uh, like, stop point, like a, I don't know how you would call it. Like, it's a info stand, I guess. It's got, like, keeper talks. Like, the one at my zoo, it has, like, a bunch of different ways to, like, donate and to talk about being a member. But it also has different events coming up in the zoo. And as well as it has every day they post their list of keeper talks. So you can kind of plan your day. You can figure out where you want to go and watch some zookeepers. You know, learn some things from the zookeepers. So I wanted to include that here. And at first I made it, you can see I made it way too big. This is massive. <laughs> it's so large. Uh, I, do, I do shrink it down to a much more manageable size. But uh, I noticed, I know on the workshop there's some awesome pieces that are like cluttery things. Like you can buy a little, you can, you can get little, uh, a map stand. So I'm going to, and I think they might be, oh, who are they by? They might be by Carlos or Mr. Domez. Either way, I'm gonna probably get those and spam them around because that's the kind of clutter and detail that really, to me, throws the the throw kicks the realism up a notch as far as layout and and the vibe of being in a real place. You you need that clutter as well as you need that kind of uh, like chanky look. You need some things to not look so great, and especially in zoos. From my from my impressions, most zoos. Not everything looks, you know, absolutely spectacular. But yeah, so this turned out fairly decent and it came together relatively quickly, which was nice. It was a nice little end cap. And so what we're gonna do is once uh, the time lapse is finished here, which it just about is. I tried, by the way, using these. I wish, I, I wanted to find one that looked like a map, but none of the info boards worked for that. So I made my own with art shapes. It's really janky. It just kind of gives the idea of a zoo map. Like, <laughs> don't think this is what the map is going to look like at all. It's, it's not. But it'll, it'll do for now. It'll do for now. I even tried to add a couple water features in there. Again, <laughs> clearly this is just some randomness. But uh, so anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into real time, have another look around, uh, so you can see it slow down in real time, and you can check out some of the finer details, especially on the. Um, uh, fragile Kingdom building. So sit right there and I will see you on the other side of this cut. All right, so here we are at general admission to the zoo and you can see right away the impact that these two little, I mean, they're not big, they're little structures, but you can see what impact these, these two little structures have on the overall air, entrance area here. So I'm liking how this is starting to come together. What I'm ending up doing is anytime I have a little triangle of uh, plant uh, of non-path that seems big enough I am trying to squeeze at least one pine tree in there uh, sometimes two but I think it really works well I wanted to add some t writing type stuff here but I'm not sure if I'd be able to do that because the technique for that if I show you the technique for that 
uh, is you oh, oh you stop moving your camera so much <laughs> you go to art shapes and what I do to make really narrow looking stuff is you uh, use a triangle piece and you uh, that's not right what what is going on with that uh, hold on let's, let's try that again why is that on the wrong grid hmm Get it. Let's get it accurate. There we go. So what I like to do, there we go. You spin it till it's <laughs> right, and then you stick it in there, and that's still kind of funky. But uh, you can see that, that you let it barely enter, and you can make little lines of text. The problem here is that it, it sticks out the back. So something like this, it wouldn't work. But that's how I did uh, certain things. That's how I make fake writing, is you use tiny little pieces nested into other pieces. And that's how you get it done. But here, here's a look at the map up close. You can see it's... <laughs> don't look too close. It's not the best. But I think if you're walking if you're walking by, I think it sells the idea. Uh, notice there's still some more cleanup to do but uh, with this. But let's take a look here at the main idea here of the episode, The Fragile Kingdom. So this is it. This is the... It's, it's loosely inspired by something at the Houston Zoo, as I mentioned before. Cute little font there, simple little fragile font. The kingdom is uh, in-game sign, so but I tried to hide it pretty well. Added some foliage up front, lots of ferns. That's the name of the game with the plants here. Tried to shroud the building. This building probably would have been here for a while. It's and it feels like this zoo is taking great care to maintain the forest area. So one of the things I'm really happy with is this entryway here. I have a uh, what do they call it? An airlock here. So just in case like an animal were to get out, it couldn't it probably wouldn't run through. But look at the patterns on the glass. This is something from the inspiration, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. So I'm also really pleased with how the handles, like of all things to, to look at, but I think the door handles are are they turn a piece of glass into a door rather easily, which is nice. I've been looking for a good way to do that. So I think this is gonna be oh my new go-to. <laughs> my new go-to technique so pretty pretty pumped with how that turned out and then you can see how the roof line here goes into the other the main part of the habitat and then it's just boring it's just absolutely dull it's just brick and I put in little lights up front I might actually delete those and put more um, skylights on top I'll show you what those look like in a second but here's this area here's how it turned out it actually looks I'm pretty actually pretty pleased with how this turned out I think it's pretty all right so you'll see here that if we had them in the game this is where the tamarins would run around made it a little cage area here this is you know it looks a little intense but i mean they're tiny little animals tamarins this would be quite a nice little uh, habitat for them and then you can see the glass there that would be open there'd be a way for them to get into their interior portion of the habitat if you're curious what's on the inside of this building it's a whole lot of nothing <laughs> it's a big empty shell, so we're not putting anything in there right now. Maybe someday if we get the animals, or I could put a couple um, exhibits in there just to get people in there. But one of the things that I really like is this super narrow pathway here is actually the exit to the house. So you would go in the main doors, then you come out this really, really gross and unassuming um, <laughs> exit here. And you've got the little trellis here with the fencing so you can't see what's going on and it leads you right into the tamarind. It is quite narrow though now that I'm looking at it. Our stairway up, don't look at that little bit of jank. But you can see we kind of end up almost at the top of the hill here with our with our stag there. And I am thinking those stag are going to have to be unobstructed. I am liking that. One of the things I really enjoy is the view from, from here. I like that a lot. So I'm, I'm really pumped with how it's turning out. Uh, one thing I did add, and actually it's up here, I went the wrong way, check this out. I was going to make these, but then an awesome member of Bro Nation and an awesome uh, Planet Zoo player, Pond Shrimp, which I'm sure you've heard of by now, Pond Shrimp made these for us. These are where you can fill up your, your water bottles, get a drink, give your animal a drink, although I don't know if they'd allow dogs in the zoo. I don't know. But anyway, how spectacular is this? Uh, she saved me a lot of time and energy and effort. These look fantastic. So I'm going to spam these all over the park. Only thing is, look, we have... <laughs> what she did is... Um, let me freeze this up. This piece... Like, peeps, get out of the way. Um, 
that piece right there is a an, an emitter of dandelion seeds, which is what the little white bits are. And you'll also see some leaves shooting around. That's for right there. And there's no way to turn those off. You could turn those off in Planet Coaster. But you can't in Zoo. So up here at the top of the hill, we have some debris floating around. It's all right, though. I just love... That looks so natural. It's so spot on. I'm loving it. There's a look at our pronghorns. Oh, there's one. You got a buffalo on this side as well. Pretty cool. Oh, look, they're playing with the toys. Oh, so good. All right, let's hop out of this view, and I'll give you a look from above. So let's take a gander. So you can see here that this entrance area now, it's big and open, which I like. Uh, but we are adding some things, and I'll add some more things to clutter this area up. Um, but then the Fragile Kingdom, I, I kind of like the way this sits right here. We got this little quad here of buildings. And you can see my, I was going to try to go this way. And I'm not sure what I'm going to put over here. Something long and narrow. Maybe we'll put cheetahs or something over here. Do do something in this area here. I'm not quite sure. Maybe some 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 big cats would be cool. I don't know. I'm. What should we do next? You tell me in the comments. What kind of animal? What kind of animal should we do next in in this area here? So maybe primates. I don't know. There's all kinds of options we have. So here's uh, one of the things I'm most proud of actually of this entire episode is the top of this building. We've got our. Uh, our light right here, our, our, our skylight. Oh, I gotta add one more. There's actually another skylight right here that I need to put in. But check out the roof details. I was actually looking at the image at the Google uh, Maps image when I built this and props to Domez for his awesome HVAC system. And I just used those and some beams, uh, some banner posts, or no, some fence posts or something. What are they? They are new world banner posts so those are the pieces i used to get this look and i think that just adds so much realism i know if you're not familiar rubel trillions is doing this in his tivoli zoo and my god that man he can make it looks so realistic he is so good and and so detail oriented so not a lot to show off for this episode but i did want to show you that i am still working on it and i am pretty happy with this building in the next episode, I think I'm gonna, I have to finally bite the bullet and build the interior for this shop because it looks pretty bad without it. So we'll do that and we will also start working on something over here to try and make a mini loop. Maybe it'll meet back up here somewhere. So what's gonna go over here? Maybe this would be a good place for wolves. Maybe this whole front area here is now the uh, North American area. I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you did enjoy, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you are new and you haven't yet, or you've been watching for a while and just haven't, consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the content here on the channel. So with all that being said, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever, and I will see all of you for the next episode of Emerald Gardens. Talk to you later, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. This one is a lot of